Hey, Loyal. I'm the Vice President for the U.S. Franchise Amino Oncology for AstraZeneca. I'm excited to be here as we've had great data readouts across the world, like actually San Diego and now Espo through Barcelona, across our amino oncology portfolio. We're super excited to be here at ESMO, where we're seeing a continued evolution of our portfolio of 30 state disease for the immune oncology franchise. Unfortunately, at this conference, we're reading out the Niagara study, which is the first study in decades to read out for muscle invasive bladder cancer patients. With the addition of MPMZ and Dvanumab in the new adjuvant setting with chemotherapy and then in the adjuvant setting post surgery, we're going to be show a fort benefit in EFS and OS with an enforced PCR. This is actually consistent with other perioperative studies set out, including um, updated data that we recently shared for lung cancer GM in the early lung small cell lung cancer perioperative space. We also had near post chewing that was building upon the UGM backbone with additional uh, modalities in the new adjuvant setting. We're awaiting further readout from the Matterhorn study, which is our peri- perioperative study in gastric cancer, where we've had PCR. Read out right. So we're super excited about the evolution and the improvement that infancy can be had with perioperative setting with potentially curative interventions. Niagara is our global phase three study in the perioperative setting for muscle invasive blood cancer. Importantly, it's the first phase three global study to read out to demonstrate positive efficacy and safety results with adding immunotherapy to the perioperative uh, setting. It is the addition of Infimzy with standard care chemotherapy in the neoadjuvant setting and then um, post-surgery and FIPSI in the adjuvant setting. What's really exciting about this data is we not only show a positive um, impact on PCR with an improvement in PCR rates with the addition of FIPSI in the neoadjuvant setting, we also see positive EFS with a hazard ratio of 0.68 and OS with a hazard ratio of 0.75 in the adjuvant uh, with the totality of the of the uh, treatment paradigm, including the adjuvant and adjuvant effect. One of the other exciting data readouts we have at ESMO is our five-year overall survival outcome from the Himalaya study. Our Himalaya study is a study of infinity plus judo, so our anti-PD-1 and our anti-CGA-4 agents in the setting of first-line unresectable catching biliary cancer or liver cancer. Uh, what's really exciting about this data is it builds upon our legacy of long-term survival multiple indications. So now, for the first time ever, we're seeing the hope of survival of five years for patients with first-line HCC. Importantly, the Himalaya study looked at the combination of our anti cgla 4 agent, Tamilumabab, in one single priming dose with the addition of infancy or anti-PD-1 agent um, on an ongoing basis. What's really exciting in Himalaya is, if you think about HCC, it encompasses two diseases in one. The physician needs to treat the liver and the cancer, and therefore maintaining liver function as well as this delaying disease progression is really important. With data from our Himalaya study that's been presented prior to ESMO as well as the ESMO, we are now seeing for the first time the hope of patients to not only live to bite years, but also have preservation of their liver. It's really great about data across two conferences here between the World Lung Cancer Conference in San Diego and now ESMO We're really seeing an evolution of role that MDMC can play across multiple team types. In fact, this year alone, we've had 12 positive readouts, seven indications total from where we had two um, just, just a few years ago and across five different disease areas. Let me put that into perspective. Across the two um, conferences, we are really seeing the outcomes changing across multiple early stage treatment regimens. We have read out updates of data from the GM study, um, including EFS at the World Lung Conference. We have read out here the first ever perioperative regimen in um, muscle invasive bladder cancer with the Niagara study. And recently at the at former ESMO in 2024, we read out the first ever study in limited stage small cell lung cancer showing the Adriatic data which showed improved outcomes uh, for patients with uh, limited stage small cell lung cancer as just watching. Not only are we improving outcomes in the early stage setting, we're also seeing improvements in the later stage setting. Fortunately, earlier this year, we showed for the first time ever three year overall survival for patients with BTC. And today at ESMO, we are also showing outcomes in a layer, first line, unresectable HCC with outcomes of the five year type. 
yeah, the first ever thing for these patients. So really um, in, um, in the long term setting. Last but not least, we're seeing a wave of our, of our novel agents coming now with our bi-specific. We have exciting data across both world, lung, and ESMA. There's two novel agents um, in our bi-specific portfolio, one being our TTLA4 PD1 bi-specific and the second being our PD1 uh, digit bi-specific. Um, we hope to show you more data with those in the next few posts. An important takeaway from the WCLC conference is also the importance of the perioperative regimen in general for patients with early stage effect non small cell lung cancer. Seeing the data showing that perioperative patients really benefit more um, than patients who receive the algebra therapy alone really sets the stage for the importance of uh, the Aegean regimen and the benefit we really hope to add to patients with this, with this early stage disease. At AstraZeneca, our bold ambition is to eliminate cancerous cause of death by 2030. What's really exciting about the data that we're seeing this year, and unfortunately at this ESMO, is we're getting one step closer to the PD data read. We've had data readouts across multiple modalities this year. Really importantly, we're now seeing data coming out of our next wave of therapy agents, device specific. I look forward to the potential for these agents to transform outcomes for patients across multiple treatment points. Don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe to Onka Daily on YouTube. Hit the bell icon to stay updated.